Bonjour everyone, Pentuf here today for a new video in which I'm gonna give you some quick advices on which IS tank you want to play. If you played World of Tank Blitz long enough, you're probably aware that the first IS tank ever to be implemented was the regular IS from the tech tree that you see here as a premium because I enriched it. But of course, as this tank when it comes out was pretty popular, Wargaming decided to make more money by allowing us to get some kind of declinations of this tank. Basically, we have many variants in the game, some of them being Tick Tree like the IS-2 you see on screen, some of them being Premium like the IS-2 1945, and some of them being Collector like the IS-2 Pravda. And at first, every time Wargaming released either this one or this one, a lot of player complains telling Wargaming that they literally sell us the exact same tank as the IS. And even if on the aesthetic type, yes, you are probably right, for the rest, the statistics are truly different and I can tell you that some of those tanks are definitely better than others. But let's compare them, it's going to be easier for us. When it comes to the DPM, they have all the exact same gun, a 122mm one, except on the IS-2 if you play with a small gun like it was my case with the 100mm. But beside that, for the weapon handling, you see that they are pretty much the exact same. The only thing that really changes about the Pravda and that makes it better than the others is the power to weight ratio because compared to the regular IS you are going to gain nearly one and a half more horsepower per ton and even if it doesn't seem that big at first I can definitely tell you that on the battlefield it does make a difference and also make it a better tank. The second thing that makes the Pravda the better one overall is the fact that this one is truly armored. Let's just Take a quick look at the armor profile. At the front, 230, nearly 240, if you angle it properly, millimeters of armor. You still have this little weak spot here, but as long as you hide the lower part of the hull, you should be safe. Those two little cupolas, not necessarily cupolas, but hull cheeks, let's call them like that, on the sides are no problem because you have 260 millimeters of armor on them. If you use your six degrees of gun depression, it becomes even better because because right now you have 260 pretty much everywhere on the tank which means that no tier 6 can penetrate you no tier 7 can penetrate you either and yes even if you still have the cupola that is a weak spot that is pretty much a common weak spot among all of the is tanks you still have some great armor on the turret cheeks as long as you don't get shot exactly in this square right there which is the uh, weak spot and you don't even have this weak spot on the other side here it's literally only this little area right there that not a lot of people will penetrate and a better mobility plus a better armor for the exact same gun means that the Pravda is the best one. So on paper it seems like the IS-2 Pravda only has advantages but those voices. The Pravda is basically an anime tank from the Girl Un Panzer anime or something like that. I forgot the exact name of it, I'm sorry about it. And I want to apologize straight to anime fans. I'm not judging you at all, but personally I hate the voices from anime. The overreacting thing is something I really, really hate. And the problem is Wargaming, and that's totally logical, they wanted an anime thing. They wanted an anime crew voice, which is on paper what well, seems to be a great idea to appeal to anime fans. But they gave the, those overreacting anime voices and on the long term, they are pretty annoying. Like, seriously, if you play two or three hours in a row with the Pravda and those voices, you are just gonna... Let, let's say that the regular crew voices, when you will stop your three hours of playing Pravda, are going to be sugar to your ears. It's... <sighs> I hate those voices. But anyway, let's jump into the playstyle of the tank. As I told you already, you need to hide the lower part of the hull. To do this, the best is finding an all down position. On this map, I love to play to the center right there, because the center is the place to be if you want to control the match, if you want to control the map, to know what the enemies are doing, etc, etc. Because from this position, not only will you spot the enemies, you only show your turret, and at the same time, you get some backup. Take a look at the map right now. You see that all my teammates are with me, which means that I'm immune to getting pushed. 
and of course it's only a matter of time before we manage to kill uh, literally all of them one by one because they will have to push on us as long as nobody can go on the cap circle this position is safe now you are probably seeing that the cs52 is getting really really annoying uh, no, not uh, because uh, he was trying to piss me off or anything like that, he was just playing regularly, but he took the exact same positions as me for the whole game. And to be honest with you, even if that's kind of bad, I was wishing for him to die in game so I can get peacefully <laughs> to my positions. Like this, for example, can't shoot, taking shots, taking risks also because I can't shoot because of the CS. So what are we going to do right now? You see that currently it's not necessarily working pretty well because we only have 6 degrees of gun depression. Even if it's in the norm on most maps, it's not going to be enough. Of course, from time to time, you are going to be able to snap uh, a couple of shells if you're lucky enough, which was my case with the 1850A. But it's not something that will save you or will make you enjoy the tank at all, specifically when you need to snapshot. The Ice 2 Prop Die is one of the tanks with which you are supposed to fully aim before shooting, otherwise your gun dispersion is totally horrific. But of course, sometimes you do not have the chance uh, to do this or neither of the time, specifically when a Nash or is trying to kill you. So you need to adapt, overcome and just snapshot praying that the RNG will be with you. And this is exactly what we're doing. Snapping shells on the Nashor and only having to deal with the Shkod now. And you see that it seems like we are currently losing. I mean... But if we're losing, we're still Pravda, we're one of the strongest tier 7, if not the strongest heavy at tier 7, if we put aside the Broken Smasher and Annihilator, of course. And now, things are going to be interesting, you're gonna see. The CS-52, once again, is uh, trying to escape, but I didn't want it to push him by the way, I just want to get my shot on the 1850N. 15A and once again here I could have the perfect shot but yay thank you CS really appreciate the fact that you're blocking me again and again and again of course I missed because of the uh, freaking terrain blocked me as well and now now I'm thinking ah, ah finally finally the CS is dead I have all the enemies for me all the positions for me and I can just allow myself to kill them. It's going to be quite easy, actually. The MT-25 is trying to push us. We are a super heavy tank, so we just get in, ram the boy, kill it, securing the kill. Now we only have to deal with the 1815A. I'm using the wreck of the ARL to, uh, to hide myself. Now I just need to turn around. The 45TP I has seems not to push at all, which is our chance. It doesn't have enough uh, alpha damage to destroy me. He missed getting my 5 kill, killing him, securing the win, and boom, that's pretty much what the 45TP Habiha is uh, going to do. Nothing. And that's what allows us to get a great game. So basically, 3k damage, 2k blocked, and this is the blocking damage that I really want to insist on when it comes to this game. I told you the Ice 2 Pravda is definitely a tank with which you can have crazy games, and it shows, it definitely shows. When you see what kind of credits we are doing, and obviously what kind of games we are capable of doing as well, it's just insane. It's just insane and incredible, and once Wargaming will put it back in the shop, because it's one of the rarest things to get into the game because literally Wargaming is never selling it, I definitely advise you to get one. If you don't already have the IS-2 1945, it can be a great premium with which you're gonna have fun, but of course, if you already have a Smasher or an Annihilator, there is no point of actually playing this tank, right? So yeah, that's my review of the Pravda and hopefully you liked it. Personally, I'm going to see you soon for a new video on, uh, I don't know yet on what, so you know what, it's going to be the surprise. Take care of you and yeah, see ya.